Welcome to Cooking the Feast. Today we're going to be doing a review on the brand Meissen and their essential stainless steel cookware set. The pans themselves are very heavy duty and they look like this and the rest of the ones we have here. Each pan itself is made up of five layers of aluminum and stainless steel alternating and coming in at about three millimeters thick. Now let's go over what's included in the set itself. The first step is a 12 inch stainless steel skillet. This is what's gonna probably compromise most of your cookware here. The included lid here and sits on just nicely. You'll find that this is quite a large surface area in here. It curves out rather nicely and leaves a lot of room in here for putting chicken, steak, beef, stir fry, anything that you want to use in this. The handles themselves are quite nice too. You'll notice that it has the open areas here to help disperse the heat. And the one thing I noticed on this is these almost rarely ever even get warm. After a long cooking session, the handles do start to get a little warm, but not burning or anything, nothing that's uncomfortable that I wouldn't put my bare hand on this. Next up, we have the 10 inch skillet. Again, big surface area compared to other pans of this style. Great overall use. Our next pan here is our 10 inch stainless steel saute pan. Like all the other ones, we have our 10 inch cover to go with it that also fits on the 10 inch skillet. And then looking in closer, you'll see that this has the sidewalls up that go up straight compared to the skillet. One of the things, it also has the included extra handle on the side so that if you're doing something with a lot of liquid in here, you can grab it and have a firm handle on it if you need to transport it or move it around the stovetop. Our next pan up is our three quart saucier. Of course, the included lid. And then you'll notice the big difference on these is the curved edge on this. This is gonna be helpful when you're trying to stir around in the pot with a spoon, a large wooden spoon, or even a spatula. Get the edges in here. You will have less burnt material in here, if any, because of the design that really makes a lot of sense with this. And then finally, we get to our eight quart stock pot. Included lid. This is exactly what you would expect in a stock pot. This one might be the heaviest of all of them. So heat retention is gonna be an incredible plus on this one. This is gonna be great for if you're making all day long stocks, chili, cooking down things, and especially when there's a lot of liquid involved, boiling pasta, things of that nature. So I wanna take a good look and get put it through the tests of the footage that we've done for Cooking to Feast over the last six months and show you what kind of results you can get. Um, fast forward, I'll let you on a sneak peek. The review is gonna be good because I've absolutely loved using these pans. All right, so we're gonna do the hands-on practical test with this and we're gonna start with steak. Because if we can't cook a good steak with these pans, why bother? We have first a T-bone steak and the 10 inch stainless steel skillet. So take a look at this. We're searing on both sides and you see the hot heat that we've gotten the pan up to by allowing it to come up. The temperature for about five minutes is doing its job. Flip that steak around and take a look at that sear. All the salt crust and everything in there, that is what we're looking for. Hey, these are doing a great job so far, but let's see what happens when we finish it off. Look at the bone, everything's starting to pull back a little bit. And so we've added some butter, some thyme, and some garlic. And we're gonna tilt this pan. Because of the large surface area here, we're now able to spoon this butter up onto the steak itself. Another great quality of these pans is the surface area you're able to get with the pan. I'm not even using the 12 inch pan, and this is more than enough for my purpose right now. So plated, that's a good looking steak. That's fantastic. Look at that crust on the outside. That's what we're looking for. And now let's cut into it to see how we did. There we go. We have a uh, medium rare to medium, and that's how I like it. Look how much juice is still coming out on the plate. We did a great job. So next up, we're gonna use the 10 inch pan again, and we're gonna cook a strip steak. Now let's see that. Yep, check. 
That's a good sear on there. And so we got a hot pan, but let's see, once we turn it over, let's see if it sears the other side just as good, or does it lose all its heat and you just get an, a brown colored steak with no sear on the other side. Before we do that, again, we're tilting the pan and we're getting the nice butter action going. And let's take a look now. Ha, <laughs> that's another good looking sear on there. And that's a good looking steak. So there you go, the thermal mass of these pans, once they're heated up, they stay hot. It's like similar to cast iron in that sense. That is what we want with a good set of pans. So let's do some sides here. Green beans. I already got some oil in there and fat rendering down from the bacon. And we're gonna try to do a nice sear on these green beans. So far, so far so good. Uh, still using, this one is the 10 inch skillet. And we put some water in and we cover it up tight with the lid. And look at all that steam coming out. The lids on these things work really well. They trap everything down in there. These are done, these are good, seared outside, nice and soft because of the steam. So let's move on to some rice here. Some people shy away from rice and stainless steel, but look, nice fitting cover again, all that steam coming out, and this rice is done and it's perfect. Look how fluffy it looks. That's what you want right there. Another check, glazed carrots. They was rendered down, another check. These look great. So now let's move on full dinner test. So we're gonna take a look at these and try to make a whole dinner with them. First, we're starting out with the 12 inch Meissen stainless steel pan here, and I have half chicken breasts. You can even fit another one in there and still not crowd the pan up. Now look at the flip on these. This is the seasoning and a great sear on the chicken. I let these warm up at a medium heat and we're getting exceptionally good looking chicken from this. So you'll see all the pan drippings in there that have reduced down. And we're gonna take these with the onions that we're gonna add, and we're just gonna get all that off of there. So it's not burned on. These are doing a great job. And you see how it's releasing all that food material into the onions. I've added wine to deglaze these, and now we're gonna add the cream to form our sauce. This is a one pan meal, and this mycin pan is doing a fantastic job. We're just warming the chicken back up, and then we're gonna plate it. Take a look at that. That's our finished product. Full meal, first check, yes. Now we're taking scallops here. We already cooked the steak in this, and so we're getting great sears on that. We're deglazing with our chicken stock, and then we're gonna add a little more heavy cream into this. This is looking great so far. And then now notice, I'm using a metal spoon on these because you can do that with stainless steel. So we're gonna finish up the sauce and we're gonna plate it and then we're gonna put our scallops and then our steak, which was seared and baked using the same pan. And then we put our sauce right there on the steak and the scallops. So another check. So now we're gonna move on to onions. To these onions, we're gonna add some chopped up apples and this 10 inch saute pan works great for this because you'll see all the liquid in here. And then we're just gonna render it down. This does a great job as you'll see nothing is sticking. And then we have some applesauce. In addition to the applesauce, we're gonna use our three quarts saucier to make mashed potatoes. And see, we can mash them right into the pan once they're soft because this is stainless steel and we don't have to worry about a coating. And look at these, these look great. Added our cream and then here's a close-up shot, perfect. These pans work really well for this. And then finally for the main part of the dish, we have some coated and breadcrumbs, panko and parmesan pork chops. And look how good that sear looks on there. We have a nice golden brown breading and those look perfect. So it's plated, it, and there you go. Check on the full dinner. And now we're moving on to bar style foods. So first up, we got some meatballs here, but they're not meatballs. We're gonna be using the 10 inch saute pan to make smash burgers. Great thermal mass on these pans. These cook hot and they cook fast. Take a close up here, all the grease coming out, and then we're gonna use our metal spatula on this. Flip them and take a look at this. Fantastic crust. Talk about something similar to what you would get on cast iron. These things are great. Like sometimes why even use it? Because these things can go right into the dishwasher. I'm not advocating for you not to use cast iron. And uh, believe me, I'm going to continue to use my cast iron. But when I want to do something quick and convenient, take a look at the results of this burger. That's fantastic. And I, so that's another check. So can you make smash burgers on this? Absolutely. How about a normal burger? Why not? So we take these pre-made patties here and we use our 12 inch skillet and let's give it a good flip. That's good sear on there. So yeah, we're getting some good thermal mass 
that's embarking this nice sear on the outside. And then we melt some cheese down onto it and we're gonna plate these. That's a good looking burger. Top it however you want, but these pans are doing a great job. So now we're gonna move on to my favorite part. So we sliced up some thin onions and we're cooking these down in some butter and oil. So what are we gonna use these caramelized onions for? We're gonna make steak and cheese. So taking this 12 inch pan again, we're gonna make sure that it's ripping hot and we're gonna add our meat to it. We already know we can do steak. So what is sliced steak gonna do on it? It's gonna do great. So after a few minutes here, let's get to flipping on it. So there you go. It's already starting to get some really good color and then get a sear on the outside of it. And so when it's done, we're gonna put our cheese on there and we're going to admire our handiwork. So this application is imitating like a flat top at a counter or something kind of counter surface like that. And so we're gonna take this meat and cheese and see how it releases easily. And we're gonna put it in our 12 inch sub roll. The pan has done an absolutely great job and look how good the sub looks. I had a great time eating this up. I still think about this sub and how good it was. All right, so let's say you wanna do some deep frying. I've got the three quart saucier here because I wanna do small batch chicken wings here. So these are like the buffalo sauce style ones here. I've taken breaded chicken wings and now we're gonna deep fry these here. I just wanna do a small batch, otherwise I'd be using the large stock pot. And these have done a great job. I've kept it at temperature and they held their temperature really well and we're able to crisp up these wings really nicely. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull these from the oil and then we're gonna sauce them. These look absolutely great and they tasted even better. The versatility of the sauce is really impressive here. And look at these wings, they are what proves it. So now we're gonna move on to breakfast and sweet. I love breakfast sandwich and breakfast foods. So I've already cooked some bacon and then poured the oil directly into the three quart saucier. Cubed up these potatoes and I'm gonna cook them right into that bacon fat. As you see, they're already starting to crisp up really nicely. And because Taco Bell got rid of their cheesy Fiesta potatoes, I mean, I gotta start making my own now. So look at those, you got the nice coloring and these are gonna come out perfect. Nice and crispy on the outside. Fried eggs here. So we have some butter down in the pan and we're going to fry these eggs up. Once they start getting crispy on the bottom, you know they'll release easily from the pan. They came out perfectly. We're just gonna pour over a little butter and then we're gonna remove them from the pan. Next, scrambled eggs. You didn't think you could do that on this, but with enough butter on here, there shouldn't be a problem. And as long as your pan is hot, there's not gonna be any stickage. These look good. They taste great too. Another big thing that you would wanna use these for is for hash browns. I mean, it's perfect. You need high heat and you need something that's gonna give a good sear to the outside of these, especially with the oil contact. So these, I'm flipping it over and take a look at it. That's a good looking hash brown right there. So those tasted great. And look, you got nice crispy outside in the exterior of it. And then the bacon fat in there is adding some extra flavor. So if you just want to cook some straight up bacon on the 12 inch pan here, take a look at that. It does a great job. I like to do this and just put it right onto some white bread for a breakfast sandwich. And then in addition to the bacon, I like to crack a couple eggs into this. And don't worry if there's a little bit of residual bacon on there because the way we cook this, it's gonna adhere to the egg and then it's all going to release as one. If that's a theme you haven't picked up on yet is how versatile these pans are and how much you can do in just one pan because of the large surface area. I told you, it's going to release really well. And so I put these right on my sandwiches and that's a good day for me. We're gonna do a little bit of sweets here. I've cut up some apples and I'm putting these in the large eight quart stock pot. I need to soften them so they can become flexible and this is a great way to do it. So I put these on medium heat and I wait until some of the liquid has come out and they're flexible. Then I put them into a bowl and so that you see my tart shell is where I line them all around in a rose pattern. After they're baked, you get a nice tart like this. Well, these wouldn't be anything great if you couldn't do the quick, easy, instant type of meals, you know, that you would do on a regular weeknight. I got some hamburger helper here. I eat this all the time. Check. Taco meat with the seasonings. Another check. And you know what? It looks great and it can do everything you need. Normally with dumplings or like pot stickers, they recommend using non-stick. And yeah, you can still do that. They do stick just a tiny little bit comparatively. 
But here's one thing you're not gonna get with it. Look at that sear. You're not getting that on nonstick, and they taste great. So try it out. Spaghetti sauce with some hamburger meat tastes great. In our eight quart stock pot, I found an insert that fits right in there. And we're gonna put some angel hair pasta with it. Another check. So finally, we're gonna do some box macaroni and cheese. You already know this is gonna do it well, but I just wanted to show it. We can mix everything directly into it because it's stainless steel and don't have to worry about scratching it up. So there you go, everything works here. And let's go back to some final conclusions. One of the first impressions that I had of these pans right out of the box was how heavy they were. These really, really are a step up in terms of quality from what I'm used to. The weight might catch you off guard the first time, but eventually you get used to it. One of the first impressions besides the weight was just how beautiful these pans look. The shininess of them, and you'll see here, they're still shiny. I've had these for six months now. And every footage that you've seen in this video, or will see, it was used while they were still new or on the way till now. This is the last footage that I'm taking is of the beauty shots of this now. So I can say they've held up pretty well. They've held up really well, actually. Just slight dinks here and there. Anytime burnt on food, any kind of discoloration, I know that I can always bring it back to the shininess here. And really it inspires me to want to cook foods with them. So every time I see them in here, nice and shiny and clean, I think, you know what, let's not go out to eat. Let's not just put something together that's real quick and easy. Let's use these, because in some senses, almost like a work of art. So there you have it. So here has been our look at the Mycin collection, the essential collection of stainless steel cookware. I have to say that I, this has blown me away better than the results. I took a long time in research before I even pulled the trigger on this and I'm glad I did. The only big downside is the fact that I went with the essential set and not the complete. They have three different versions. They have the starter, the essential, and then the complete set. The complete set itself comes with a two quart version of the saucier. And then in the other case, you have a secondary pan um, that comes in addition to this, which is a six quart Rondo pan. It has the shortened handles on both sides and think of it more like a brazier pan. This is the essential set. You can do essentially everything you need to with this. But, you know, when we're cooking the feast, sometimes you want the best things in life. So that's it for today for Cooking to Feast. This has been a review of the Mycin Essentials Collection. If you liked it, we're gonna be doing more reviews and subscribe for more.